Today we're going to be talking about radiation carcinogenesis. It's a big fancy word for saying the increased likelihood of cancer upon radiation, especially high levels of radiation. Hey guys, I'm Brian Nett from HowardIalgyWorks.com. We have bite-sized content for those that are interested in the radiology field, especially radiologic technologists. If that sounds good to you, click below on subscribe and then click on that little bell icon so you can get notified when we release new content. So specifically, again, what we're talking about is at high levels of radiation, there's an increased likelihood of cancer induction in the body to humans and animals. And we're gonna be going over those details starting now. So as is often is the case, the trailblazers are the first people that are working in a given industry often pay the highest price. And unfortunately that was the case in radio radiation technology. Namely, for instance, Marie Curie, who is one of the first people who learned a lot of the early information about radiation. And she actually has two Nobel prizes and she is believed to have died from leukemia because of the high radiation doses that she had during this research. Additionally, early doctors, dentists, and technologists who were working with radiation before the downsides and the health effects of radiation were known also had significantly higher risks of cancer induction. Most of the information that we have is from atomic bomb survivors. So after the atomic bomb, the information on the lifetime mortality and a estimated radiation dose that these individuals got has been tracked. And thus most of the information comes from the radiation doses from atomic bomb survivors. So we'll talk about later how, unfortunately we have to do something called extrapolation or try and estimate what the effect of the radiation dose is at the low levels that are used in diagnostic radiology. But we do know that it would be unethical to have two groups, one where we give a radiation dose and one where we do not give a radiation dose. So we're not likely to get better data in the near future which really would tease out exactly the effects of this low level of radiation. So I'm going to give several examples of patients and basically data sets of people that have been studied and the cancer induction which has been demonstrated because of the elevated risks of radiation dose. So leukemia is one example in the, in the blood. This has been demonstrated in atomic bomb survivors. Another example is liver cancer that's been demonstrated in atomic bomb survivors, as well as an early contrast agent, which actually ended up depositing radiation dose to the liver. Another example is breast cancer, which atomic bomb survivors, as well as a study in Nova Scotia on uh, tuberculosis, where the individuals received many repeated x-rays. This is another data set of individuals that, that have been studied for the elevated cancer risk. Another one is bone cancer. So this was an unfortunate case where there was a group of young women who were all painting dials by hand on watches. And in order to get the paint brushes to have a nice sharp tip, they would wet it in their mouth and each time they would do that they would end up actually ingesting a little bit of the paint which actually had radium in it so that radium ended up settling in their bones and led to an increased risk of bone cancer lung cancer is a case that's been observed in atomic bomb survivors as well as miners that have been exposed to radon atomic bomb survivors from hiroshima and nagasaki also have seen increased risks of thyroid cancer. And the Chernobyl accident 
also demonstrated increased risk of thyroid cancer. Additionally, skin cancer was the first demonstrated cancer to be caused by x-rays. In 1902, this was found on the hand of a radiologist and dentists, physicians, and x-ray technologists also demonstrated increased risks of skin cancer, especially in the early days of radiation use. And what we're gonna talk about is that often we'll be making plots which have the excess risk of cancer. In this case, it's the excess risk of a solid cancer. And that's plotted against the radiation dose that those individuals receive. So this is from the BEER-7 data set, uh, report rather. And so what we want to do is actually the doses, the radiation doses that are given in diagnostic radiology, they're way down here in this corner on the order of millisieverts. And so we don't have actual good data in this area. So we have to do something called extrapolation to estimate the risk that we're gonna have cancer induction due to these diagnostic procedures. So the idea is there's, there's multiple possible ways that you could do this extrapolation and there is not agreement amongst people in the radiation health fields and medical physicists. So the most simple technique is to draw that straight line that we saw through the data. If we draw that straight line through the data and then we keep drawing that straight line down all the way to the origin where there's zero radiation dose, that's this line here. That line is called linear extrapolation. And it, in this case, we also say there's no threshold. So there's no threshold below which the effects change. Even at a very low level, we assume the effects are the same. The other possible options would be that at low levels, the radiation damage is actually worse. That would be this curve here. That's called supralinear quadratic extrapolation. There's also quadratic extrapolation shown here where you assume that the effects at very low levels actually are not as bad for radiation. And then the final is called hormesis, the final option for the extrapolation, where some hormesis effects have been demonstrated in single cell experiments. And in that case, you draw the line and what actually happens is at very low levels, there's actually a positive effect of the radiation dose assumed. So there's several of these options, all of which have some people that believe that that is the best option. But in general, what we do in the field right now is we use this simplest approach of draw the straight line through the data and use a linear extrapolation. And doing so, we can see that in a working population, if there's a relatively high radiation dose, it's about an 8% increase in cancer induction compared with the background normal population. And then if it's a relatively lower radiation dose, it's about a 4% increase. Again, this is per sievert. So if we're talking about millisieverts, we have to use a much smaller multiplier. So if we're talking about a radiation dose, which is one hundredth of this dose, then the risk of increased cancer, assuming this linear model, would also be one hundredth of this risk. So for the whole population, it's assumed a 10% increase in cancer per sievert for relatively high dose and a 5% increase in cancer per sievert for relatively low dose. So again, just to summarize what we talked about, we know that at high levels of radiation that there is an increase in cancer caused by radiation. And at low levels of radiation, what's typically done right now is to do a linear extrapolation and assume that the data that we have, primarily from atomic bomb survivors, is also applicable to low levels of radiation. Thanks for sticking around. Another video you might be interested in is the one on gestational risks of radiation. So check that one out, coming up next. Thank you.